onto culinary artistry. An infusion of innovative African foods from across the continent was recently curated, marking a significant milestone in Kenya's culinary exploration and excellence journey that displayed a commitment to culinary perfection. Take a look. It's an experience because uh, basically, as you can see, this menu that we'll be doing tomorrow, I've never done it again. There's nowhere else they'll go and get it. And plus the whiskey, plus the ambience, uh, Jiko. It's, it's an experience. It's an experience and it's a creativity. Looking to play into the culinary space, we are seeing the culinary space really grow in this country. We are seeing amazing restaurants opening up every day. We are seeing some Michelin star chefs coming to the country. We are seeing our own chefs really growing in their craft. And it's a space we really want to be a part of. We want to um, put our brand at the front of these experiences. Well, we're now back in studio for a conversation around innovation and, of course, the export market from fre for fresh food horticultural products into the European markets. And still in studio with me, Purity Naisho, the commercial director at Interveg Exports EPZ, and Basil Malaki, he is knowledge uh, transfer. transfer manager at Innovate UK. I keep getting that wrong <laughs> now. Uh, I wanted to start off with you, Basil, and the fact of the matter has been that... Uh, uh, this, as you said, is something you've done 17 times. So briefly, talk to us about the process of identifying the challenge and then, of course, finding that this is representative across the rest of the industry mm -hmm. and then finding someone who actually can provide a solution. How do you identify these solutions and the providers and then, of course, go to either commercialize or make it broad-based? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the process, let me begin with the process. Yeah? Yes. We have a criteria. Mm -hmm. Normally, we look for companies that have a turnover of 5 million euros plus. Mm -hmm. um, in a, and there's normally a workaround. So in, in the case of Interveg, yes. we did go through the association because cumulatively, yes. they have that turnover through uh -huh. their membership. Yes. Uh, but again, we, the, pres, uh, the, sol, uh, the challenge was presented to us by FPIC. Yes. And Interveg came in as an implementer mm -hmm. on behalf of the, because we needed um, a yeah, business so that was directly involved. Essentially. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You know? And so that's how they came in. Mm -hmm. But normally we have a criteria, so there must be, you know, there's the, 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 the a certain size. A certain that scale of the business, yes. In, in a sense, mm -hmm. they must have a high turnover, mm -hmm. and there are a lot more things that we look into there in terms of their books and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, financials and stuff like that. But, yes. you know, uh, that, those are the details. Um, once we identify that kind of company, and, and I can mention some that we've worked with, like, like I said, Kenya Airways, Unilever, yes, Amref, yes. Flamingo, you can see most of them, you know, mm -hmm. take those mm -hmm. boxes, the We Center here, yes. and, you know, there's new ones that are in the pipeline. Once we identify them, we work, we work with them through just uh, making sure that the challenge that they present is not an off-the-shelf solution. Mm -hmm. It has to be something, like I said, you know, it has to be a sector technical yes. challenge, mm. something that you just don't walk online and you can do a quick yes, Google, Google search and it. you find a solution. Mm. So once we are convinced that you know there is a real challenge there to solve, again, Innovate UK, like Global Alliance Africa, doesn't work in isolation. We have an entire structure. There's an expert team, mm -hmm. sector expert teams that sit in the UK yes. that work with, uh, for example, Intervage to hone on this particular challenge, mm. coin it, and make it make sense. Yes. Once that is done, we put it on our global platforms uh, that has a wide reach. We've in the past got uh, gotten solutions from Sweden, you know, Belgium, you know, uh, UK, you know, and, and, and all over the world, India. Mm -hmm. um, and applications are normally broad, comes from like, you know, all over the world. Yes. Um, you know, once that process is done, we normally do like an info session where, you know, we can bring, you know, um, applicants up to speed yes. with exactly how this works so that it makes the application process easier. Um, you know, once we, we have, you know, once we get the applications, there's a process of, you know, sorting it. There's a process of, you know, getting them to pitch their solutions. Yes. We don't pick the solutions. The challenge owner picks. We only filter what we feel makes sense, and then we, you know, push it to the, solu uh, the challenge owners mm -hmm. for them to pick solutions that they feel um, address their particular and specific uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. So that's the process. Yeah, so Purity, I want to bring you at that juncture. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about the processes that you picked, uh, the solutions that you picked, uh, the process of trying this out, and uh, how you were able to find that this actually does work for you. Yeah, again, thank you. Uh, as I see, the, the product that we sell must arrive fresh on the other side uh, yes. of the sea. And, and so we needed this product to arrive as fresh as possible. And as I said, by air, it's uh, in hours. So like if you're sending to Amsterdam today, we put on a flight in the evening, 
by tomorrow morning if the shipment is there. Yes. And as I said again, through uh, uh, sea freight, which now we're looking at how it do you reduce the cost? Longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it takes much longer. So we're saying then how do you, because it's fresh produce, how do you extend the shelf life? How do you extend that freshness? So how, how do, do you, make you sure? extend the shelf life? Uh, that is where now the solution uh, providers will come up with that because we told them this is a challenge. Yes. Uh, if we are sending by sea, I know so it's So how do they come up with a solution? They are, kind of, they are working on it and yes. what we were looking at, they were looking at uh, because we, we picked two, um, we got two um, possible solutions, uh, possible solutions yes. and one of them is uh, the packaging issue. Yes. Yes. How do you ensure that the packaging is going to hold these products so that it arrives fresh on the other side? Uh -huh. And then the other one was how, how do you lengthen that? that uh, freshness even when the product is here how do you treat it how do you handle it when yes. it's here before you put it in that packaging mm -hmm. so we have those two solution uh, providers that are working on it this yes. thing uh, this whole process I think has taken a year first of all to identify those two mm -hmm. and it's gonna take maybe another six months for them to be able to come with a full so, so, so how yeah. is that different from what you're currently doing so that if we talked about the packaging uh, how different would the pack of for example French beans yeah. uh, that is leaving the country today by air we package differently from a pack of French beans that, that is living with one, packaged in one of the innovations that you're talking about? Again, as I said, for us, we just want to package it the way the customer wants. So the way the customer wants is what we are going to do now. How does it arrive fresh on the other side? Yes. And that is the headache of these solution providers. They are the so ones the to solution tell us. is not there yet? Uh, yeah, it's the, just a work in progress? The, the, the processing of our products actually goes as per the demands of the customer. So, so the reason I'm asking is because yes. I've seen uh, Apple, uh, things like, um, what do we call it? Um, uh, the spices that you you put into tea, things like turmeric, I've yeah, seen yeah. things like garlic, I've yeah, seen yeah. things like uh, ginger uh, from as far as China and South Africa. And they arrive in Kenya and you're told that uh, this they've sprayed some wax on this thing, that oranges have been waxed, others have had some different chemicals applied to enable them uh, last longer. Is that what you're looking at? Again, as I said, yeah, we are looking to elongate the, 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 the fresh, uh, yes. the, 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 the shelf life of this product. Uh -huh. And we're also looking at what would the consumer like? Do they, would they prefer that we put that? Uh, so what is the market is saying then? The market actually wants the product to arrive safe, as I said earlier, safe and consumable. Yes. So we have to look at all those products. If you put a certain chemical, if we are going to uh, put something on the, on the product so that it arrives fresh on the other side, what is the effect to the consumer? All that has to be checked within this solution. And that's why we are saying it yes. is taking about six months because it's something that you cannot ah, just pick and do it. Yes. So we cannot, as Basil said, it's not something that has already been done. Uh -huh. It has to be something that has not been done, yes. that again can actually uh, be able to be used on the other side and does not affect the consumer. What we need to look at, uh, bottom line, is the safety mm. of that food on the table of the consumer. How, how does the application of these sorts of innovations then affect the competitiveness of the Kenyan product in the market in terms of preferability, such that then uh, if a person is examining something that's come from Colombia, yeah. Uh, one of the competitor markets, Vietnam, for example, for some other things, yeah. um, that they will say, I want the Kenyan one because this is fresher or there's a quality I like about it? Already the Kenyan products are actually uh, very yes. highly uh, uh, sought for because I think we, uh, because of the sunshine that we have, we are in the equator. So they mm -hmm. say our French bean is sweet. Yes. Our products are sweet because of the sunshine. So that alone already sells Gives us. You an now, age. if you reduce the cost of that particular product, added to the fact that it is actually one of the sweetest products, mm -hmm. then of course we are at par in competition or even higher. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are looking for. We are looking to have for a situation whereby we actually remain in the market and we are not pushed out of the market because of one of the biggest challenges of that particular market, and that is freight. Mm -hmm. And so that is the solution we are trying to look for. And okay. once we get it, then we'll be at par or even still high. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Basil, your last ones in terms of, uh, you talked about pipeline of uh, possible projects mm -hmm. along innovation. Uh, this just being one of them. What other areas are you looking at? And of course, there's lots of uh, organizations with significant challenges out there in the Kenyan market uh, trying to sell into the European market and other places. And how can they essentially tap into what you're doing? All right. Thank you. Um, again, the role of Global Alliance Africa as a project of Innovate UK yes. uh, piggy banks a lot of on collaborations uh -huh. and connecting businesses. Yes. Um, 
you know, it's, it's collaborations. In every country we're in, we try to work with the innovation agencies of those specific countries. Mm -hmm. So like in Kenya, we work with the you know, Kenya National Innovation Agency to be able to implement and ensure there's some sort of sustainability yes. um, into the projects that we're doing. And of course, this work is supported by you know, uh, FCDO and the British High Commission. That's yes. uh, FCDO, the uh, Foreign mm -hmm. Commonwealth Development Office. Yes. Um, again, this is open innovation is not the only innovation program we're running. We're running um, a whole lot of other innovation programs. I, I can just mention two. One, yes. um, we have open innovation. Two, we have the place-based innovation. Um, the good thing about this uh, particular program and why it's also good in terms of sustainability is that we go into a place. Currently, we're working in Eldoret. Uh, we work with the stakeholders there to identify their own challenges and also work with them to solve their own challenges so that there's more of ownership. And I will even touch on that a little bit. One of the things that we're doing for context is that uh, we are developing with them as a problem they identified, how farmers in that region, and you know Eldoret is almost a food basket of Kenya, mm -hmm. how they can be able to tap into export markets. So we are developing um, a traceability solution mm -hmm. that helps them track um, you know, what goes into food, and especially now for these foreign markets, yes. from farm to fork. Mm -hmm. But again, this problem came in I mean, came from the locals, and yes. we're working with the locals to be able to solve them. Finally, we are also running another innovation, yes. a program known as the Global Innovation Networks, where this one here, the, uh, the model is we work with stakeholders, bring them into a network, and be able to identify pressing issues that we, again, build networks uh, that connect the UK and Kenya, mm -hmm. and be able to work on pressing and, you know, um, um, the challenges. And just two things we're doing there, we're working on something yes, on alternative briefly. proteins yes. and we're working on something on uh, cancer. So being able to see how do we uh, make diagnosis and detection of cancer more affordable and accessible. Okay. So this is how we, we're doing it. Quite okay. a lot uh, to unpack uh, there and of course uh, those projects uh, hopefully having uh, much impact across uh, Kenya and the region. Indeed, uh, both of you, thank you very much, uh, Purity and Basil, for taking the time to talk to us. It has indeed been quite interesting. And we actually uh, hope to unpack this much, much more for our farmers' uh, uh, TV station, especially because lots of uh, uh, people are yearning to get into the export space and be able uh, to uh, make more of a living. So consider this an invitation to find us on that. <laughs> well, Thank on that uh, note, uh, we want to bring this conversation to a close here today, but also to remind you that we'll be back on KTM Prime Business later on in the evening, so do make a date. Do continue to enjoy the rest of your viewing. My name is Peter Kaba. It has indeed been a pleasure. See you again tomorrow.